Just under one year ago, I created my very first GarageBand Quick Jam tutorial in response to a lot of folks asking me questions about how to do things in GarageBand on the iPhone and the iPad. And what I wanted to do was create a series that were really quick bite-sized tutorials that would help folks dive in and get the knowledge they needed so they could get back to creating music. Well, here we are 50 episodes later and I thought we would celebrate that by taking a look behind the scenes because another question that people ask me is how I actually make these tutorials. And it's actually quite a simple process thanks to the screen recorder that we have here in GarageBand and my ability to have my phone with me everywhere I go. So let's dive in now and take a look behind the scenes of the creation of a GarageBand Quick Jam. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And if you've watched any of my GarageBand Quick Jam tutorials, this shaky camera footage is probably pretty familiar because what I wanted to do right from the start with this series was not make it a highly produced series where I had to wait until I had time to sit down here in the studio and actually record everything. I wanted to get everything done. So I decided early on that I'm going to do it all 100% on my phone, uh, which means that I can do it wherever I am, where I'm out and about. So hopefully that adds a little bit of something interesting because I'm at various different locations. I'm outside. We have some different sounds of nature that go on in some of these videos. But uh, I also, from time to time, use this, which is uh, a little uh, device, a little uh, stand and a holder, so I can get some still shots, which is what we had before. So this is a handy thing to have if you are making videos on your phone. Anyway, let's dive in now because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the footage that I've captured for this GarageBand Quick Jam, which I've done out and about, and then the actual screen recorder footage. Footage, how I actually bring that in and do that recording, bring it into LumaFusion, do my editing, and then produce and release my final product, which is the GarageBand Quick Jam video that you are going to be able to see, which is going to be the next episode. A little bit meta here in this particular video. Anyway, let's jump into the phone and take a look now. Here we are down in the phone, and you can see here that I have my intro and outro and ending part, videos recorded, and I've also got two screen recordings here. Now, why do I have two? Well, the original screen recording, let's just unselect those. This is, whoop, this is the screen recording that I did of myself with my microphone audio on, as you can see there, and that's where I've gone in and I've started recording this. So yes, I'm recording a screen recording, which is a bit weird. Um, so that's my original recording that has everything there, but there's a problem. You can be quiet. There's a problem, and that is that if you try and use this in any sort of editing, it'll only bring in one track. It won't bring in my commentary. So what I have to do is this one is literally a screen recording of the first one. So I've simply gone in, and I am screen recording right now, so I won't be able to do it here, but I've screen recorded this, and I've got a video where I show you how to do this, but what that basically does is it takes both of the tracks, both the music track and the voiceover audio track, and it puts them onto one track. So now I can actually use this one in my video editing. So I don't need this one anymore. I'm going to tap it and delete it. And now all I need to put into my video is these three video files of me introing and outroing, and then my one screen recorder video. So to make it easier for myself, I'm going to go add to, and let's create a new album here. And we'll call this one, uh, I can't remember what I've done this one. It's uh, 3D Touch. That's right. So we'll just call it uh, 3D and save. So now we've got an album here, and when we go and do our video editing, which we will jump into right now, it'll make life an awful lot easier. Okay, I'm now in Luma Fusion, which is my video editor of choice here on the iPhone or the iPad. It's actually really great on the iPad, but it's usable on the iPhone. I actually really enjoy using it. And you can use iMovie if you want to, or if you don't want to spend, because Luma Fusion does actually cost a reasonable chunk of change. So if you're just starting out, by all means use iMovie, but Luma Fusion lets me do some cool things, which I'll show you as we go through. Now I have my template here, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate my template by tapping on the little plus there. Now this isn't going to be a LumaFusion tutorial, uh, but if you are interested in that, then by all means let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more about LumaFusion. It's a very, very cool little app. Um, I'm going to rename this by tapping on that, and let's call this 3D. And just so I know which one we're doing, and then I'll tap to open up the project. Now what I've got in here already will probably look familiar if you've watched any of these videos. So I've got my intro there, and then I've got my outro that goes through there. And then I've just got this up the top here, which is just my little Pete Johns at Studio Life today that pops up there as well. So that's all ready to go. And what I need to do now is add in the components that I showed you before. So now up at the top here, I can tap on albums. And this is where doing this album comes in handy because I can go to 3D 
key, and here are the ones that I know that I need to use. So the first one is going to be this track here. I'm just going to tap on that video. It's going to bring it across here, um, and now what I can do is I can actually queue up, and you can see at the bottom there, I can see the little audio part, so I can see where I start talking, plus I can look at the video there, so we'll queue that up there, we'll tap on that, and then we'll queue it up, and that's where I want that. So I've just used my start my finish, and again, this isn't really a tutorial on this, I just wanted to show you how simple it is to get this done. I press the down button, and that is in there, so now I've got my intro. And then I hit that, and there we go into that. Now what I'm going to do is drag across my little name plate here and put that on at the start of the video as well. Just a little tiny bit into there, about there. So it comes on, and I don't want it to go across there. I only want it to go here. So we're going to drag it to finish before that kicks in. So that is going to do that bit. And then the actual screen recorder... Uh, screen recording part so you, we can just tap across here and go to that little gap there we'll now add in the screen recorder part and you can see what happens here so you can see I'm in there I do my little bit of demo it loads up a track and then all these gaps are the in-between so that's where I'm sort of setting up and then I'll play another little bit I'll do my thing there'll be a gap there I'll play another little bit and then there'll be a gap there. So all I need to do to do this editing is come through here. You can see I hit an optimizing performance there. That's fun. And uh, yeah, there's a bit where I'm probably swearing and saying, uh, why does that have to happen? That is it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and finish this editing process, come back and show you the finished product, and then uh, we can move on and uh, finish this particular quick jam. Okay, so I'm nearly done here, so I thought I'd bring you back for this last bit because all I need to do now is tap and hold, and I'm just going to drag this because I'm just going to use the audio from this bit. This is just my little outro spiel. So I'm going to pop that underneath that one. And this is the beauty of Luma Fusion is you can do multi-track audio. So I've got a little music piece that I play behind there at the end uh, with my end screen. And then I've got my audio that I've just added in there. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We've got two more GarageBand quick jams. At yep, all good. We just need to up the volume of that one by double tapping, going to our audio, to our favorites and adding our limiter. All right, so that is going to be all good. So that is it, and if we zoom in, you'll be able to see exactly what I've done here. So there's my intro, there's all of my sections. Oh, hang on, I've done something wrong there. Have I left a piece in that I wasn't supposed to? No, that's just me chatting away. 6S, your 7, your 8, and your Okay, <laughs> I thought I'd left in and didn't do a very good editing job, but no, that is absolutely fine. We are good to go. So all we need to do now is actually export this. So I'm going to tap in the top right here, go to Movie, Export to the Photos, and then I've got my settings here. I'm ready to go. I export this. I tap this last one. It's going to write that movie out. You can see it's 3 minutes 15. Once this is written, all I need to do is upload that to YouTube, add in my description, my tags, my title, and then that is what you will be seeing. So that is episode 51 of GarageBand Quick Jams that you'll just have to wait another few days to see before that one's released. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse behind the scenes. You can see that it's not actually that difficult and it's actually super handy to be able to record your screen to make your own videos. And if you are producing music, especially in GarageBand in iOS, then why not do these sort of things for yourself? You can record your own screen. You can do your editing. You don't even have to use LumaFusion. You can use iMovie. I've got videos which I've done in the past which I'll link up there and down there that you can take a look at that. But it's a great way to just capture what you've done. And I've actually gone back and watched my original videos to remember how I did a particular thing. So it can be super handy to have that record. Anyway, if you've got comments, questions or suggestions about this or anything else audio or, or recording related, you can leave that down in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around and for your support over the last 50 GarageBand Quick Jam videos. We've got two more of them linked right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.